Hello again guys, my name is Dave. I'll be uh, showing you guys how to tie a water boatman here today. Uh, for those of you who may or may not know what a water boatman is, think of it as just like a little aquatic beetle. Uh, you know, if you like to fish lakes, it will very quickly become your best friend. Uh, super easy to cast, super easy to tie, uh, and super deadly out on lakes. So, we'll get right into it. Um, also, you can tie them <clears throat> in a variety of different colors. I, I kind of lean on green and brown myself, but you could tie them in like a black. You could tie them as like an attractor fly, so you could add a little bit of hot colors if you so wanted. Um, you could do almost a little bit of anything with the little thing. So they're a lot of fun, super easy, uh, and we'll get going. Okay, so for starters today... We are going to be tying on a fire hole 317, uh, and today I'm going to do a 14. Typically with boatmen, you know, I like tying 16 through 12. 14 just happens to certainly be kind of my go-to size, but feel free to experiment around with them. Uh, but these are great, great hooks. You get a bunch of them. They come barbless. Awesome hook in general. If you've never used them, definitely check them out. They do a great job. Um, but yeah, the 14s are great. Like I said, they are barbless, so you don't have to deal with cranking down on a, uh, on a little barb. And this hook in particular is basically, you know, it's kind of like a scud hook. It kind of comes out with a nice little bend to it. Like I said, I like the point down here. It kind of cups up a little bit. Um, great hookups, awesome hook. Then the bead, we're gonna be using a black nickel finish uh, 1 8 tungsten bead, fantastic little critter. Um, you know, feel free to use silvers, you can use golds, um, because kind of like what I was saying earlier with the color, uh, I, I personally really like the black nickel finish. It just looks really good whenever I'm tying it on a green or, you know, browns, whatever the color may be. Get that guy on there. Perfect. Get him placed up in here. Oh, that's about good. Excellent. So for this guy, I also like to kind of leave a little bit exposed. Some people kind of grab a little bit higher up uh, on the bend. Uh, and that's okay. Totally fine. Although I find that because it is kind of a scud hook, it is nice to have, uh, you know, a, l a little bit more of it exposed so you can actually have a little bit more, more working room uh, with your fly. So if you do want to kind of stretch the body back a little bit, you can do that. Thread, uh, we are going to be going uh, with the Semperfly Nano Silk. Uh, it's certainly a shop favorite here at Avid Max. Um, black just being about as neutral of a color as you can possibly get when it comes to tying bugs. Black is the color choice here today. Um, and they offer this, this thread in a variety of different sizes. Uh, because the fly isn't particularly big, uh, I chose to go with the 12 watt, which is a 50 denier. Um, comes out nice and clean, nice and small, um, easy to work with, but being nano silk is super crazy strong. So um, check it out if you've never used it. Now for starters, we're going to start up here right behind the bead. And we're going to just start by applying a nice simple little base thread layer. Just cut this out now that it's tied in. Apologies for the super squeaky bobbin. Okay. And take these wraps back till you're almost halfway through the bend. Almost, not quite. You can see why I kind of wanted to emphasize leaving a little bit of extra room there. You know, if these jaws were a little bit higher up, it'd be kind of tight right up in here. So just give yourself that little extra room. Now, the interesting part about this fly um, is that there's a variety of materials we can use to kind of make it look like a beetle. Um, one of my personal favorite materials for shells and backs of flies is called thin skin. Uh, if you've never used it, super easy, super awesome material um, that comes in a variety of different, you know, kind of modeling patterns and, and colors and 
te textures and just check it out. Super good stuff. Basically, it's like a sticker that uh, is pretty much put onto a little piece of cardboard. So you peel it off and when you peel it off, uh, it comes out in whatever shape you cut it as, but you get this nice translucent, thin, but durable uh, shell and kind of back. So to give you an idea of, you know, other places you would use it, pretty much any time you, you would maybe use, you know, something like scud back, uh, feel free to use this. It's awesome stuff. It's not stretchy like scud back, um, but I think out of that, it kind of almost makes it a, even a little bit more durable. So, uh, but this particular color um, is the model Bustard uh, in olive. Like I said, it comes in a variety, so feel free to kind of experiment around with whatever colors that you like. I like this one though, because I get that green that I was saying, uh, but I also get some kind of pattern in here that really breaks it up so it's not one uniform color. You know, it, it, it looks natural, it looks buggy, it looks like it's, it should be, you know, sitting on the back of a little beetle, okay? So the next step here, we've got our thread wrapped all the way back. I want you to take this guy, and it's kind of funky just tying this in at first just because it is a little wide, okay? Like this strip that I cut, um, and actually before I go too far here, let me tie this down. One piece of advice I will give you when tying with the thin skin is I always use a straight edge and I, you know, whatever razor blade, exacto knife, razor blade, you want something nice and sharp uh, and then line it up with a 90 degree angle. You can cut it however you like. Um, you can cut it in whatever size you like. Um, for me, I find that most trout flies roughly an eighth of an inch is about right. But if you're tying something really big, like a dragonfly or something like that, you could really cut this and, and make it substantially larger and, and it would work just fine for you. So you might have to experiment around just kind of finding the right width. But for starters, I would say start with about an eighth an inch uh, and go from there, either up or down. Now, like I was saying, when you actually tie the material in, because the uh, shank of the hook and the gauge of the hook is just so much thinner than the width of our, uh, our thin skin, it kind of goes on almost a little like kind of curled into it. Not a big deal though. Tie it down till it's nice and tight. Work those thread wraps back. I like to kind of pull the material nice and straight. And when you do that, it naturally kind of evens its way out around the actual hook. So that way when I actually pull it back up and over, it'll lay nice and straight, nice and flat, and it won't, won't come out kind of curved, okay? Now, you might think that we're about to tie in our dubbing for the body, but what we're actually going to be doing is we're gonna be tying in the legs. I find with patterns like this, it's so much easier uh, just to tie in, you know, an excessively long piece of, you know, rubber or Spanflex, whatever you're using for your legs. In this case, I'm using some Spanflex, Lifeflex, um, Super Floss. It's literally all the, all the same, all the same stuff. So it's stretchy, okay? Comes in these nice thin little pieces and you really don't have to do much to it. You get a ton of it for cheap, which is just great. And what we're gonna do is I want you to just quite literally give yourself you know, two to three inches of this stuff. It's so cheap, it doesn't really matter. But giving yourself length here will, will kind of make your life a little bit easier and, and you'll see why. So next up is the legs of our boatman kind of more or less sit in the middle to just kind of a little up the body, okay? And so the way I like to tie these guys down is we're gonna take it and just cross the thread over the top of it. Okay, just do two here. Then grab this other side, kind of pull it so it comes back up on the top. Throw two there. I like to do one more little round to really cinch things in there. There we go. Okay. Now you can see when I tied this in, look at how much extra length I've got on the leg on this far side. You know, this guy is super long, so we're, we're going to trim him down. But I've got about an inch. That's about an inch. It's so I'm, I'm very generous with it, okay? I don't get stingy with it. I'm very, very generous with it because it is cheap. And the longer it is, the easier it is for your hands to get in there and kind of fiddle around with it and maneuver it into place. So once you got your legs tied down, 
now we're actually able to add in that dubbing. Okay, so we're going to come back here. The legendary squeaky bobbin. <laughs> Okay, and as you can see, I have created a dubbing loop in here. I'm currently working on getting my thread back up the body. Now, anybody who knows me and has seen me tie knows that I absolutely love dubbing loops. Um, even with this thread, which is 12 watt thread, um, because it's so strong, you're able to literally make dubbing loops with almost anything in it, which is just really uh, a nice luxury when we're doing it because we're able to add a lot of volume, a lot of bulk with dubbing. Um, but by doing so, we, we have a very strong, you know, clump of dubbing. You know, one problem that you may oftentimes run into with kind of just simply spinning dubbing onto just one piece of thread, especially when it thread is really, really thin, is it doesn't always bite. And then a lot of people add excessive amounts of wax to help trying to get it to stick on there. And Really, the solution is just throwing it into a dubbing loop and letting the two legs of the loop spin it together and cord everything up nice and tight for us. So we get a little bit of dubbing. You can see there's a little bit of, of, uh, of wax residue on the actual thread. You don't want too much, but a little bit on there is just fine. And now we're going to actually start applying our dubbing. Okay. So for today, I'm going with SLF. Whitlock's dubbing, awesome stuff. Um, this is an interesting kind of color. It's it's a crayfish color. Um, but like I said, with all of these patterns, there's so many different variations of, uh, you know, the greens and the browns and the blacks that you can really have fun mix and matching. You could even make your own blend of dubbing if you so choose. It's really not the most important thing, just as long as it tends to be in that kind of neutral earthy tone color kind of world, you're pretty much golden. So we're in here, we got our loop open, and we're gonna start adding stuff in here. Now, when you're adding dubbing, feel free to be kind of generous. One thing you'll notice about Boatman's is, in the grand, in uh, grand scheme of insects, they're actually pretty chunky little dudes. Um, like I was saying, they're pretty much, you know, just a little aquatic beetle. And so they are kind of fat, they are kind of stubby and short. So feel free to kind of get a little generous with your dubbing. It may seem like it's a lot. It almost always does um, when you're tying and you're tying, especially with dubbing loops, it seems like that is way too much dubbing. But a lot of the time, what you're gonna find is it actually sometimes isn't even enough. And part of it is because when we actually have our loop, we spin it up, it will clump itself up. Remember, there's two legs here. Oh, now you see how that leg got caught in there? That's okay. Just take your scissors, just pull it right out. Again, the length will help you just help control it, okay? Let's add a little bit more spin. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Okay, so look at how tight that cord is. You see what I mean? Nice and tight. You can pick out some of the excessive stuff that you got in there, the loose fibers. There'll always be a little bit of loose fibers. Okay, just pick them out. Now we got a pretty even cord, too. You get a lot of consistency out of dubbing loops. Okay, I like to take a pair of hackle pliers, grab right below, not directly below, but a little bit below your dubbing loop. So you got a little bit of working room here. Cut the twister out. Okay. Now is the part where we're going to wrap this dubbing in. So take your time and go around. Watch out for the point of the hook. It's really easy to nick your thread, especially if you're using a, a weaker thread. Um, it's, it's pretty common that you end up hitting that point and nicking your thread enough to break it. So be cautious. And the idea in this fly is, you know, unlike a lot of mayfly nymphs, stonefly nymphs, you know, a lot of little insects that you guys have probably been tying for quite some time, it's nice to have a taper to those insects. These guys are short and stubby. Remember, they're short, chunky little beetle-like critters. So add a substantial amount. 
You can see it's adding up. It's getting kind of fat. That's what we want. And now we get to the legs. I just do pretty much the same thing I did when I tied them down. Just cross over there, cross over there. You can also pull this leg. You see how I'm pulling it? Now see how when I let it go, it stays nice and straight. You can use that to really keep those legs where you want and don't have to worry about it. Keep going. Okay, nice, nice, nice. All right. Now that'll happen sometimes, no worries. Just put your finger on it, pinch it again, we're good. Okay, you can see this thing's super chunky. Don't let it bother you. And I want you to take that dubbing and the thread, go all the way up to the back of the bead and really snug that down. Okay, really snug that down. Take this, perfect. Cut out that little tag of thread. If you want to do a little haircut to them, trim them out a little bit if you choose, feel free. Like I said, I like volume in this fly. There's always a limit to everything. So that you might, you know, you can see that there's kind of some of these long stragglers out here. It's okay. Just get through, cut them out. Cut them out. Cut them out. Okay. Now, our lovely thin skin that I was talking about. It should still be drooped all the way at the back of your fly, okay? I want you to kind of, don't pull it too hard, but I do want you to think kind of taut, nice and straight, right up and over the back of this thing, okay? And as you're doing that, I'm kind of taking my fingers, compressing the fibers down a little bit, just to get them out of the way. Okay, once you wrap that guy up, up and over the top, give a couple good cinches. If you have to adjust it, remember we want it on top of the fly. This is the back of our little boatman. Okay, snug it up. You can pull these legs out if you really want them to flare out to the sides a little bit, no worries. And then I like to kind of pull on the front kind of pulls the, that material right in here where it's bitten, kind of stuck on and tied down. It kind of pulls it out, expands it a little bit so you can really snug up those wraps in there. And as you can see, each time I do it, you can see it's kind of crimping in there. It just means that I've got a nice solid connection to my fly. Now we trim her out. Okay. So what we should be left with is a nice little beetle. It's got a little extra length to our legs, which we'll trim those down here in just a second. If you would like to trim the body a little bit to get rid of some of that little extra dubbing, it's totally fine. Just trim it, that extra stuff. Like that, perfect. All right, now I'm gonna cut my legs. So my legs, naturally bowmen have pretty darn long legs for the length of their body. What I like to do is I will basically cut it long until I'm like, I'll, I'll cut it short. So I'll take little pieces off at a time because once you cut it, you've cut it. You can always cut more off. You just can't tie it back in, obviously. So take your time cutting it down till you find your length. I kind of like to think about it, if I drew a circle around my boatman, if I drew a kind of a circle around it, it would be almost, almost perfect, but the legs are just a little bit longer, okay? We'll give just a little bit more. There's that. There's that. Perfect. So. We're almost done. Pretty much the fly's been built at this point. All that we really have left is to apply a little bit of UV resin to the very end. Okay. Um, before we do that, you'll want to whip finish this off. We don't need the thread to be on here anymore. 
Um, add a couple whip finishers in here. Add them in. Boom. Boom. And we'll do one more for good measure. Beauty of this thread is you can add a bunch of wraps and it really doesn't add bulk. It's so small, so fine. It's nice. Highly encourage you try it out for many different flies. So we're pretty much there, good to go. Let's add that resin. Okay, now depending on the viscosity of your resin, you may kind of have the clock ticking ticking on you. The thinner it is, you need to kind of be Johnny on the spot with your, with your UV light. If it's a little bit thicker, it doesn't tend to run as much. Um, and so it gives you a little bit more time before the fly kind of gets saturated with all the resin. So just keep that in mind when you're using it. Right now I'm just using Flow, which is one of the thinner uh, UV resins that you're gonna find. Loon makes it, it's great, great UV resin. And the idea is we're gonna basically, oh, get that dubbing out of the way. We're gonna take it and we're just gonna do a thin little coating and I just run right up it, boom. Hit it down. Make sure it's nice and cured. I like to just roll it back and forth. Rotisserie. All right. That should be good. And that, folks, is a deadly little water boatman. Fantastic bug. Next time you're out hanging out on a float tube, uh, give them a shot. Would not be surprised if you landed a gigantic trout doing it. Like I said, a lot of people know or have heard of them, but rarely end up fishing them. You know, they kind of get shadowed by, you know, damsels and dragonflies and leeches and streamers. But a lot of people underestimate the power of the boatman. So, till next time.